All I can say is this boat is definitely built different. What a unique looking boat. This is why I love these fishers. You know, it needs work. It's an old boat. It's very wide, has lots of beam, so this is pretty spacious down here. What's up guys, today I've got a tour of a 1977 Fisher 37 for y'all. I absolutely love these boats, albeit this particular one needs a bit of work, but let's take a look. I'm also excited because I'm launching a service I'm calling Not A Broker Consulting to help you guys with finding your perfect boat without the broker bias. For more information on that, please stick with me until the end of the video. All right guys, so I just went ahead and stepped aboard and all I can say is this boat is definitely built different. You can tell that this is a very heavily built boat. It feels super solid. Look at these side decks. Like they're not super wide right here, but look at how deep, look at how deep they go. Look at how high those bulwarks are, especially compared to, you know, where my foot is. They basically go up almost to my knee. Your foot's not slipping off of that. And then the lifelines come off of the bulwarks there, they come up pretty high. So you've got a deep side deck going forward with places for you to hold on to. On top of the coach roof, there is a prism for light, three opening hatches, and it looks like three solar vents and two door aid vents. So plenty of ventilation as well. This is a northern boat, so you need that, you need that ventilation continuing forward. Up here on the foredeck, it's a relatively good size four deck for what you get and again just super safe it feels like I'm up here essentially in a giant bathtub because of how how high these sides are I don't think there's any way I'm going going overboard very easily so it just in general feels very safe up here big horizontal windlass up to the bow roller which looks to be pretty integrated within the hull there's not there's not really a bowsprit on this boat, so you don't have that extra length, that extra footage when you're at a marina like this that you have to pay for, which is, that could be a good thing. Frilling head sail. I'm gonna go ahead and look aft. There's our cleats right there. And looking aft, I mean, what a unique looking boat. This is why I love these fishers. It's just one of the most unique looking boats at the dock here. So, I like that a lot. Continuing aft, got a couple of whisker poles right there. Looking up the main mast, it's actually a relatively short rig, being a catch, single spreader, easily handled. It's a really good sized boat. Continuing aft. Up here on the coach roof of the pilot house. Again, places for your for your hands to go. Navigation lights up high here on the, on the pilot house. And then there's also a boom gallows for the main boom. And what looks to be a big opening hatch right there as well, which that would be That'd be pretty nice in fair weather. You definitely want to be able to open up the pilot house if it's warm weather. My one critique of this design is this transition right here from the side deck to the cockpit is not as, as safe, I think, as it could be. You just have this one handle right here. You've got to step up and this lifeline's not very high right there. So, you know, you've got to step up step over the combing right here and down into the cockpit. So it's just this transition right here that I think could be could be safer. But once you're in the cockpit down here, I mean, these combings come up to my hips. So super high combings and, you know, a nice, nice, safe canoe stern aft cockpit back here. Lots of storage down below every every one of these these seats here. So that's that's really nice. Let's go ahead and just take a look. Got access to the steering back here. Manual bilge pump. So even though this is a canoe stern, you've got a good amount of storage back here, which I like to see. And then looking forward. 
the mizzen mast is right here so you know you've got everything you need to control the mizzen right here in the forward section of the cockpit and then it's going to be sheeted sheeted back here you've got your Genoa sheets back here as well a grill off the stern Samson posts back here for your cleats look at that canoe stern so the idea of a canoe stern is it's gentler in a following sea when you're not going too fast so this is definitely not a fast boat but it's built to be comfortable and safe all right guys it's time to go into the pilot house all right so we are in the pilot house and this is the you know this is the main steering position this is the only steering position it's in here in the pilot house in the protection of this full-on structure all the way around you and you know what this is my this is my favorite part of the boat because in any weather you're going to be comfortable you've got opening windows on the sides a big opening hatch up here it looks like that front window can open as well so you know, you can have adequate ventilation in here in hot weather, and then you can close it all up in cold or rainy weather so that you can be comfortable and protected from the elements, which is very important for a cruiser. So it looks like there's kind of a nav station back here, and then forward of that is the helm right here. So we've got the interior helm position right here. It's the only helm position, like I said before and you got 360 degree views so i like it and you can see your sails through that window right there instruments and that engine panel <laughs> looks pretty uh pretty old there but a little love hopefully she can come back to her former glory to the port side there is a settee right here. Good place to sit. That also folds out so you can have a little more room on that on that bench there or whatever you might need. But you could probably set up a lee cloth as well to, to sleep there while you're on watch or just off watch. There is some storage down below. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for this pilot house. I love it. I love it. And obviously guys, you know, it needs work. It's an old boat. It needs someone that's gonna put the effort in and the money in to bring her back to her former glory. But I think this is a special one for sure. All right, now we're in the pilot house. We're done with the pilot house. And we're gonna go down below into the main living area. So it's actually not that far down. It's only three steps on that ladder from the pilot house and we're down in the main salon. So, you know, for this size boat, it's very wide, has lots of beam, so this is pretty spacious down here. It's very comfortable. You've got port lights all around for natural light. A central folding table, kind of a U-shaped settee here, and then a long settee on this side. You can sit lots of people right here, probably six to eight people down here. We're gonna go forward and we'll come back. So continuing forward, all the way to the forward section of the boat, there is a V-berth up here. Now this, this is definitely cozy. So it's very wide, but you can tell that it's close up to the bow of the boat and it, and it, and it narrows out very quickly. So you definitely have to to sleep with your head this way and your feet that way. There's some hull ports right there. They're covered up though. 
just to keep it cooler down here. But you can open those up for sure. And you also have a hatch up here. So this is kind of the guest cabin up here. You've got some storage down below there. And I imagine that, that that piece can come out if you need to take it out. So that's the V-berth. So just after the V-berth, there is a hanging locker on the starboard side here. So place to hang clothes, but also shelves behind those clothes. So you've got extra storage right there. And then to port of the hanging locker and just aft of the V-berth, you can open this door. It does have a hook so it can stay open like that. So it can actually kind of give you a little bit of privacy uh, into that cabin, into the V-berth right there while it's open. But this is, this is the head. So this is the single head on the boat. It is a wet head. Definitely not, you know, it's what you need and nothing more. So you're not, you're going to be comfortable on this boat, but you're not going to be living a life of luxury. <laughs> That's the head right there. Compression post for the main mast. Turn it aft. There's going to be storage down below these settees here, storage behind them. And then looking aft, I mean, this boat really opens up again. It is a wide beamed boat, but it is a double ender. So it narrows out in the bow and the, and the aft section pretty good. But the middle section right here is nice and wide. So the other set see here on the starboard side, storage behind it, storage below it. Continuing aft, nice little gimbaled oil lamp right there. Places for you to brace, which is nice. We've got a, a small galley right here again what you need and nothing that you don't. So gimbaled stove, sink, cold storage, and a little bit of food storage as well. Turning to the port side right here. So they have a microwave here and then below that it looks like, you know, it's a piece of furniture that doesn't go with the boat, but they're using it as a stand for the microwave. What used to be here, and the reason I can tell is that you have this heat shielding. What used to be here, I believe, was a wood stove. So, again, this, this was built to be a northern boat, so this is a great spot for a wood stove. Central on the boat, the chimney would have gone straight up there. And honestly, if, this, if I were buying this boat, I'd probably put a wood stove back in there. And then, to the port, we've got the second cabin. So this is gonna be, you know, quarter berth slash aft cabin. We've got kind of a narrow double berth back here. I'd probably use this as the main cabin. It's a little easier to get into, in and out of, than the, than the V berth for sure. There's a little vanity right here, some storage down below. And then a very, very small nook for for hanging clothes right there. So again, this boat's gonna keep you safe, keep you comfortable at sea, but you're not living a life of luxury, for sure. And then they're using this for some storage right now. I do like this boat though. All right, and lastly, going back up into the pilot house, that's gonna be where the engine access is in the floor of the pilot house. So let's go ahead and open that up and show you. All right, guys, so there's your engine access. The whole floor opens up. You know, I just have half of it open, but the whole floor opens up so you can get down there really easily. And we've got pretty good engine access, to be honest. For this size boat, I would say that's pretty good. Even this comes out if you need it to come out. But, you know, I can't complain. So, pretty good engine access, given the design. All right guys, I'm up here in the V berth and it is time for the full continuous blow decks walkthrough from about to start.
Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I certainly love this boat. However, it is a bit overpriced for the condition that it is in. As with all of our videos, the broker contact information and current asking price is going to be in the description below. Five years ago, we posted our first yacht tour. Since then, I've been aboard hundreds of cruising boats, both on and off camera. I've also been sailing for about 15 years now, worked on three boats, lived and cruised on one, and have grown this YouTube channel to a full-time career over the course of the last seven years. Randy has also been an integral part of all of that, but as I'm sure you've noticed, she's stepped away from the channel for the most part to take the lead in raising the kids, which I have to say is a crucial role and no easy task. She's an absolute rock star. One of the biggest requests I frequently frequently get is for help in your cruising yacht search and I completely understand why. The yacht market is full of brokers that are supposed to be seen as quote experts. However, while some may be, oftentimes that's not the case. This is compounded by the fact that by definition, because they make commission on the sale, a broker is biased towards selling you a boat but not towards selling you the right boat for you. You cannot rely on them to have your best interests at heart. This is actually why I've turned down countless brokers that have offered me jobs over the years. I don't make money on the sale of any boats that I tour and I want to keep it that way to avoid bias to protect you, the audience. So hopefully as a solution to this problem, I've launched what I'm calling Not A Broker Consulting. This is a new Patreon page where you can sign up to get help from me specifically at varying levels during your cruising yacht search. You might have noticed that boats come in all shapes and sizes and cruising plans, budgets, families, personal needs, etc., are all different. My goal will be to help to find a boat that fits your customized situation the best that I can. If you sign up, you'll also get early access to ad-free versions of our yacht tours, which is an opportunity to see what I'm posting before it goes live to the masses. Certain tiers will also get super early leads on yachts that I think are great deals even before I've filmed or edited a video for them. I think this could really help those of you looking for a cruising yacht and just need some guidance. And as always, if you just want to support what we do, there's a tier for that as well. Anyway, a link to the new page is in the description and should have popped up on screen as well. So thank you in advance. Much love. See you in the next one.